She's got books available too, by the way, if you want to check out more of them. Yes, I do. Hello. They're only $20, which I had to pay for, so please don't say I'll give you 10 for it. No, just I don't know. Um, hi. I would like to share with you... Hi. I figure I'm going to be on this whole thing about post Roe v. Wade stuff because, as I said, now living in Austin, Texas, that is such a thing that is so down your throat and how many more rights are taken away from women all the time. So I thought I was going to share with you two poems that appear in the, I believe it's the July 2023 issue called Personal Archaeology. It's one of the literary magazines I host, CCD Magazine. Titles are based on accepted writings in the book. Um, two, next two poems I'm going to read from you are in this book, and yes, they are also in the book Testament. So, and I, actually they won't be in my feature, so. These are all new to you, but these are in two books, count them one, two. I hope you enjoy them, or at least can tolerate all of the crazy stuff that you're hearing about how all these things are affecting women. So this first poem that is within both of these books is titled, Elevating the Fetus Goes Against Religion. Waxing poetic about the clash between government with religion is in my dossier, but I fight with evidence as my ammunition. And, but if it's a religious argument you want, then we can deliver that unto you as well. The Holy Bible disagrees with policymakers on when life begins, and these restrictive laws even go against basic Jewish beliefs, too. People from one clergy are suing the state of Florida because of this new abortion law, and that this law violates their freedom of speech, religious liberty, and the Constitution's Establishment Clause, quote, because it codifies a singular and exclusive religious belief with no plausible secular justification. The, this religious law, lawsuit isn't the first one either, when two Christians, one, three Jews, one Unitarian Universalist, and a Buddhist argue in separate lawsuits that their ability to live and practice their religious faith is violated by this one state's post bro abortion law. So if logic and reason couldn't sway you, maybe listening to those from multiple religions would. <laughs> When I see the immoral acts from religious people and also see how this united nation will only consider leaders for their country if they can prove how religious they are, well, maybe you hear you need a religious argument too. Whatever argument it takes, maybe we need lawsuits from different religions against one law. And this lawsuit, even these lawsuits, even argue that with this new law, it sets, and I quote again, a pernicious elevation of the legal rights of fetuses, while at the same time it devalues the quality of life and the health of the woman or girl who is pregnant. Wow, this religious argument sounds familiar. So, so maybe, if we want to turn back there to the right direction again, maybe lawsuits from different religions is a necessary step to show that everyone, no matter what your beliefs, is affected by a select few changing the law for too many. This may only be a start, but the more ammunition, the better. <laughs> poem that appears not only in the CCND July 2023 but, uh, issued book that is titled Personal Archaeology, but it is also in the Cyber Witch 2023 book that was released during Women's History Month, I believe, titled Testament. One more post where we wait for poem before I go on to the next person, which I'm guessing that Wes will tell you who that is when I get off the stage. But this is titled Once and Future Rights. Whether the state sets up new trigger laws, or chooses to revert to their insanely old laws, the end result on the surface may seem similar, but see what you've allowed by allowing to go back in time instead of moving forward. After the overturning of Roe v. Wade, Michigan reverted back to Chapter 2750 of Act 328 of the Michigan Penal Code, which as a fun read, <laughs> bans, medications for abortions, cohabitation, 
adultery, sodomy, and get this, blasphemy. <laughs> so we're yeah. using the Lord's name in vain, right? So granted, these ever sweeping <laughs> these ever sweeping pieces of legislation may make it illegal to steal away children for prostitution or to use as sex slaves, but it also makes it illegal to sell, and I quote, adulterated butter or cream. What? <laughs> yes, and this is only in the first 5% of the law, which I'm sure every politician doesn't want to read. So, even if prosecutors say that parts of the law are, quote, archaic, old, and have been all but formally been discarded, you're missing the point. When allowing laws like this, we allow not only narrow-minded perceptions of how to treat a woman, but we also allow the government more and more access to everything personal about us. After Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok steal your data, then you choose to give them control of your most personal choices, thanks to these laws that we don't even bother reading. Dreading the stripping of rights from women because of laws may uh, may never be that we have many never even agreed to. Words from a John Galt speech echo, ringing loud and true today as clearly as they were when they were written now nearly a century ago. The quote: "All that evil needs to win is the consent of good people." When these laws stand in women's way, remember, like prohibition a century ago, which they made failed laws to change people's behaviors, once protected women's rights now have become criminal, not to the woman, she is the victim here, but to the people who are dispensing the drugs to make a woman's life easier. It took the government 13 years to get something as antiquated as prohibition off the books. So, when it comes to women's rights, women shouldn't have to wait that long to gain their once and future rights. Thank you, thank you.